is KOB4 Nightbeat. As you're going after some of the worst of the worst, there's always a risk, but it is increased as you become more and more proactive. And good evening, New Mexico. That risk to clean up our crime problem and keep us safe reached a terrifying level for police tonight. A SWAT situation you're looking at here in Northeast Albuquerque ended with a suspect dead and an Albuquerque police officer recovering from getting shot. Our KOB4 Nightbeat team is breaking down everything we know about what happened tonight. Julie Frendak spoke to first responders who are already vulnerable after losing a fellow officer in a shootout last weekend. We want to start, though, with Griffin Rushton, who just got briefed by investigators on tonight's shooting. So, Griffin, what do we know at this point? Well, we know that the injured officer is recovering at home with his family tonight. APD Chief Harold Medina revealed it was a SWAT officer who was shot in the arm. He was taken to UNM Hospital and he was released just a few hours later. Now, police say that shooting happened after a standoff at the Copper Ridge apartment complex off Tramway. This viewer video shows SWAT teams preparing to enter the building. Chief Medina says officers were searching for a man who had a violent felony warrant. Once officers got to the complex. The suspect's family members reportedly alerted police he was inside an apartment with a two-year-old child who was potentially in danger. Uh, as officers were uh, attempting to make entry into the home, uh, the individual opened fire on the officers and uh, at least two officers returned fire at this time. Medina confirmed officers killed the suspect. Chopper 4 shows us the size of the scene earlier this afternoon. There's easily a dozen police units, armored trucks, and other vehicles at the scene. Chief Medina says the suspect's warrant was connected to a gun-related incident in Santa Fe, but he is also a person of interest in a recent homicide here in Albuquerque, but Chief Medina wouldn't say which one. Police leaders noted these large-scale operations are sometimes necessary for the suspects they're trying to arrest. These are warrants for dangerous individuals, so it's not just any felony warrant. So obviously that proved out today, but that's the reason the SWAT was involved. Now, Chief Medina says it appears a second officer was shot in the leg, but he was protected by what seems to be bulletproof gear. Medina says he was not actually injured by the bullet. Police leaders say they are still trying to figure out exactly how many shots were fired during this incident. Now, the southbound lanes of tramway were shut down while police were investigating this scene, but mm -hmm. we have learned they have since been reopened. And Tessa and still a, a lot of holes to fill in on on this situation, including the, the name of that suspect and some more details on what exactly those warrants were for. But Griffin, thanks for some more answers tonight. In just one week, though, we have had two gut punching reminders of the price of trying to keep our community safe with police saying they're being more proactive, especially here in the metro. That risk is only getting higher. They're doing what they have to do to keep the rest of us safe. And sometimes it means putting their own life at risk. And that is exactly what happened today. So let's bring in Julie Frendak because Julie, it was just last night here on the Night Beat. We mm -hmm. talked about these tactical divisions within APD. It's been a busy year for them so far. I want to get this right with now 54 SWAT call outs so far. That's nearly double what they were seeing last year. And, and leaders say situations like tonight's are very, very possible the more proactive they're being. Exactly, because that tactical division mm -hmm. is purely reactive. So yep. they respond to these calls based on how this suspect acts and provide that necessary support to all the other officers and all the other divisions that are there. And APD yeah. Chief Harold Medina tonight talked again about the connection between these SWAT activations and the department's ongoing effort to clear this warrant backlog we have. We are pushing our officers to become as uh, proactive as possible uh, as you're going after some of the worst of the worst and these individuals know that uh, they have pending warrants and that they're going to go to jail, sometimes these individuals make unrational decisions. So there's always a risk, but it is increased as you become more and more proactive. Again, Chief Medina confirmed it was a tactical officer who was shot tonight. This video shows just how large that tactical response is during these incidents and the resources they bring to these situations are different and more advanced than other divisions have. Leaders told us on average 40 members of law enforcement respond to these activations and we saw that today. 
we're doing as much as we can to support other units within the agency and support our community the best way we can. Um, and that's the result you're seeing is this increased activity. Tactical activations are purely reactive. We are reacting to events emerging within our community and responding to the requests of uh, field services personnel and detectives. In that video you had shown during the, the SWAT response, I mean, you could actually see the moment that officer was shot and then right. his uh, fellow officers are pulling him out of harm's way. What happened tonight, though, uh, just came at horrible timing for law enforcement. As we know, Alamogordo police officer Anthony Ferguson was laid to rest just hours before we had learned an APD officer was shot. In fact, when we first got that news, before we confirmed it, we had members of law enforcement in our newsroom taking calls from people to, to raise money for the Ferguson family. Absolutely. Absolutely. We had a room full of law enforcement from the 1082 Foundation yep. actively taking those calls and donations from New Mexicans. One of them actually admitted if tonight's situation would have been worse, they would have had to step away and respond as well. They mentioned how law enforcement is a family, no matter what department you work for, and a shots fired call is one of the worst you can get. You experience things that most people don't experience. Um, we see things that people don't see, and so you build that really f tight bond with them. A lot of times law enforcement is shown in a bad light, um, but we are members of this community, and the communities that we serve, we also live there, our families live there, and so we want to make this, these communities better. And according to APD, this type of proactivity yeah. isn't slowing down anytime soon. The department now has the state funding and the willingness to keep trying to clear this warrant backlog. So again, depending on how all of these suspects act, right. we could see even more of this type of situation in the metro. We hope it doesn't get any worse than what we've seen exactly. already. All right, Julie, thanks so much. And again, New Mexicans were already saying their final farewell to a fallen officer when this shooting happened in the metro. We're going to look at how hundreds honored Officer Anthony Ferguson's life and sacrifice coming up in just a few minutes.